subscriptions. These are costs that we all have to incur on a monthly basis. Some of us have two free subscriptions, others have 15, 20, I'm not judging you. Either way, we have one thing in common and that's the fact that these subscriptions are costing us money on a monthly basis and we all wanna find ways to reduce those expenses where we can. If that's something that you need help with, definitely stay tuned for today's video because in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you 10 different ways that you can slash your subscription costs. First things first, be very strategic and utilize free trials where you can. Many subscription services offer this enticing offer of free trial for 30 days before you then have to make a payment. They do this to entice new customers into their service offering. You trial it for a period, if you like it, then you pay to continually use it. Well, by taking advantage of these free trial periods, you're able to test out a service before committing your money to it. And this way you can make a more informed decision as to whether or not this service aligns with your values, aligns with your needs, and aligns with your budget. A really strategic way to utilize these free trials is to maximize the free trials with all the different email addresses you have so if you're like me I have my maiden name as an email address I have my marital name and I also have aliases which I use for different free subscription services but what you do need to remember to do is set reminders in your calendar so that you cancel it when that free trial period is over and you make note of the email address that you have used to subscribe to that free trial because I've had an experience with Amazon Prime before where I thought I'd cancelled the free trial but actually I'd used a different email address for that free trial so they ended up charging me. Thankfully Amazon are so kind to just give you your money back when you ask for a refund so I didn't end up taking it out at that time. Now I actually subscribe to Amazon Prime because I've realised that it's one of those services that I do continuously use so I'm happy to pay the $8.99 a month to keep it but back when I was just free trial hopping that's what I used to do. I used to set up different email accounts, use them, set reminders and cancel them in advance of that payment date. Another way to reduce these subscription costs is to share the savings with family plans. So lots of service providers actually provide a more expensive option where you can have multiple users, but it works out cheaper when you divide it by the amount of people using it. So once upon a time, I was sharing um, Netflix with my sister and my siblings. There was like literally five different households using the same one Netflix subscription. Unfortunately, they've clamped down on that now. So you can't have multiple users outside of the household using that same subscription but there are actually family plans that they also do which cost a little bit more which if I really wanted Netflix I would pay my sister a little bit extra so that she has a extended period of the plan and I can use it at a cheaper price so if there are many members of you and your family that want the same service and they do have the option of a family plan why not get your heads together and one of you take on that family plan and then split the cost it work out cheaper for you and it will also work out cheaper for those family members another way to reduce the subscription expenses is to wait for opportune moments what do I mean by opportune moments patients can be a virtue when it comes to subscriptions. So what you wanna do is keep an eye out for seasonal moments, promotions, special offers, extended free trial periods before subscribing to that service. A lot of subscription services run promotional offers, so definitely take advantage of them when they become available. Waiting for these opportune moments can help you to secure the best price for your desired service. Another thing you wanna to do to save money on those subscription expenses is to consider downgrading the plan you're on to save yourself some money. You may have signed up for a service once upon a time when you were using its maximum functionality. Time has passed and you're no longer maximizing your usage of that subscription, yet you're still paying the premium price. You don't wanna to continue to do that. Look at those subscription services that you have. Are you using the maximum benefits on the tier you're on? Could you consider downgrading? So for example, my Google Drive at the moment I'm on the two terabyte plan, I think it is, and I pay 80 pound a year for it. I mean, every year I do say to myself that I'm going to delete loads of content on my Google Drive so that I can go for a smaller plan. Now, if you're one of those people that are not storing a lot of data on your drive, but you still have the premium plan, then consider downgrading to a cheaper plan. So going back to the example that I just gave a moment ago with my Google Drive, if I did the thing that I said I was gonna do and reduce the amount of data I was using, I would go down to a smaller plan I wouldn't say on a more expensive price plan when I'm not using anywhere near the data allowance another example I can give is gym membership I know they have different gym memberships according to your usage so better gym for example near me they have different plans for people that are using the gym during peak and off peak hours if you know that you're not going to go to the gym during those peak hours do you need to pay for a membership for those peak hours or is it better downgrading to one off peak 
which actually aligns with your usage of the gym anyway. So really go back to those subscriptions that you have and be honest with yourself in terms of how much you're using those subscriptions versus how much you're paying and work out whether or not you are on the best plan for your money. Just making this simple adjustment can save you a lot of money without compromising on your service experience. Another thing you wanna to do to reduce the subscription cost is to negotiate and switch service providers where necessary. I was a loyal EE customer for 12 plus years, probably even longer actually. From when I was in university, I signed up for T-Mobile. Back then it was actually one-to-one. -one. But anyway, I signed up all those years ago and stayed with them through all the rebranding from one-to-one to T-Mobile -one to, to EE, I stuck with them. But then when it got to a stage when I realized that I'm just paying a premium price to be with you guys, but I'm not getting the benefits of it, I can get a mobile phone contract at a much cheaper price elsewhere. Eventually, I just bit the bullet, made that phone call, tried to negotiate, they weren't having it, and I took my services elsewhere. And I've been a loyal Vodafone customer for the past three, four years, but that can change again if the price isn't right. Another way to reduce their subscription costs is to embrace free alternatives. What do I mean by that? So for example, I mentioned going to the gym earlier. Do you actually use that gym membership and do you need that gym membership? Could you still achieve your fitness goals without paying to go to the gym? So for myself, for example, I gave up my gym membership when I got pregnant with my last son and since then I've now started running again so running outside is completely free it doesn't cost me a penny rather than the 40 pounds that I was paying per month when I had the gym membership also when it comes to subscriptions a lot of subscription services actually offer a free version which may be good enough to meet your needs so for example I use Canva a lot for my creative content and I have Canva Premium, which is a paid subscription. It's like $10.99 a month in dollars. However, they also have a free version, which is more than sufficient for somebody that doesn't need Canva as much as I do and just needs it for the odd content creation here or there. So just really be honest and interrogate your usage of these different service providers. And if you feel that the free alternative can meet those needs, then definitely downgrade to the free plan and don't waste your money on subscription services that you're not fully using. <laughs> Have a look at your subscriptions and prioritize the ones that are really essential to your life. Take a moment and really look at them, evaluate them and decide which ones are more important to you than the others, which one are you using the most, which ones are having the biggest impact on your life and lifestyle. These are the ones that you wanna keep in your subscription list and the ones that are bringing you the least value that you are not using as much and don't feel like it's working well for you. Those are the ones that you should consider eliminating. By being decisive with these subscriptions and eliminating the ones that bring you the least value you're going to free up so much of your money to put towards things that really bring you more value and are of more importance to you another great way to reduce those subscription costs is to pay for some of those subscriptions annually so for example i have canva membership and i pay for it on an annual basis because you get two months free by doing it that way rather than paying every single month for 12 months so look at the subscriptions that you currently have ones that you know that you're going to use for the whole year why not consider paying for the whole year upfront and save yourself some money by getting a couple of months free with that subscription service provider. Some of the few subscriptions that I have that I pay for annually include Google Drive, Canva, Audible and Grammarly. All of these things I know I'm going to be using this time next year so I pay for them upfront and don't have to worry about it for the rest of the year and I save myself some money in the process. Another great way to save money on your subscriptions is to track your subscription cost on a spreadsheet. Now I use my budget and expenses track to track all my subscription costs. I'll share a link to that in the description box below and link it somewhere up here on the screen. If you don't have a budget template that you're using monthly, this will be a great tool for you to use to budget your expenses on a monthly basis. So you can see exactly how much your different subscriptions are on a monthly basis and seeing it all in one place on one snapshot view makes you realize exactly how much you are spending a month in total on your subscriptions. And then you can ask yourself the question, is this how much of my income I wanna spend on a monthly basis on subscriptions? Because on this tracker that I use, it actually has a percentage of your total income for the different spending categories. So the amount you spend each month for subscriptions, you'll know exactly what the percentage is of your total income by using that tracker. So definitely take a look at those subscriptions that you're paying for monthly and make sure the total cost is something that you're happy with paying just towards subscriptions subscriptions alone and if it's not something you're happy about look at those subscriptions and eliminate a few I'd also suggest at this point to set yourself regular reminders to review these subscriptions maybe once a month might be good or once a quarter for you just to make sure that 
what you're using today reflects what is important to you and it's not a case of it was good for me six months ago but today I'm still paying when I don't see the value in these subscriptions. Another way to save money on your subscription costs each month is to unlock special discounts. So if you're a student, if you're a senior citizen, inquire from these different subscription providers about the discounts that they have available for these categories of people because oftentimes a lot of companies do offer student discount for subscriptions. Likewise, if you're over 65, there's additional benefits and discounts that you can have in your subscriptions available to you. So it's always important and worthwhile to check your eligibility for these different discounts across your service providers. A lot of times they might not tell you up front what you could be eligible for, but just by doing a bit of due diligence and research, you can find out that there's so much cost savings for you to make across your different subscriptions. Overall, I hope you gathered from this video that you can reduce your subscription costs without having to compromise on your service quality and your lifestyle. You can still enjoy the same services but at discounted rates just by shopping around and being smart with your purchases. So just by applying one, two, three or even all ten of these strategies, you're going to see yourself save money across your different subscriptions. Just a little bit of effort and small strategic thinking will go a long way in keeping to budget but also enjoying the different services provided by your many service providers. If you found this video useful and have taken away tips for you to save money on subscriptions, you're going to want to check out this playlist over here where I share other ways for you to save money across your different budget categories on a monthly basis.